Hey guys, today we're going to create this grass model from Hytale. We'll be using Blender for this tutorial, so if you're new to Blender, check out my How to Make Hytale Blocks tutorial series to get started. It's a great way to learn Blender, and when Hytale release their model maker, a lot of these skills will become transferable. So I've collected a few images to use as our reference for our model, and as you can see, we have many variations to choose from. However, they're all pretty much using the same technique, with a few alterations here and there. So I'm going to recreate this one, and I'll use this image as my reference as it shows multiple angles of the same tuft of grass. The first thing we're going to do is start off by creating a single plane, and once it's painted, we'll move on to the modelling process. So let's get started. So in order to get a flat preview of our texture in our solid display view, we'll want to go to this little drop down menu button here and change it from studio to flat and change this from material to texture. So we're after a great start. Now, as usual, delete the default cube by selecting it and hitting the delete key on the keyboard. Now hit shift A to bring up the add menu to add our plane. We're going to rotate the plane by 90 degrees on the Y axis. So here's a little trick. If you want to see your rotation value, look towards the top left of the screen and if you hold down control while rotating it, it will snap every 5 degrees, and if you hit shift and control together, it will snap every 1 degree too. So now that we've completed that, let's move into the shading tab to create our material. So we have our plane selected, but we don't have a material. We can simply select new, or click on this little arrow here, so we can use the material that was created for our cube. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'll rename it grass material. Now we have to add an image texture. So hit shift A to bring up the add menu, select search and type in image, and select image texture. Now connect the colour to the base colour, and connect the alpha to the alpha. And let's change this from linear to closest. If you happen to struggle with any of this at any point, I have a playlist for complete beginners, which essentially explains everything I'm doing, so I'll put that on screen now. So after changing this to linear, select new to create a new texture. Give it a name like grass underscore texture. Change the width and height to 32 pixels, and change the colour to whatever the base colour of your grass will be. For mine, it's a dark green. And select OK. That's it for our material, let's move to the Texture Paint tab. In order to paint individual pixels, we need to change a few settings. So first we'll widen this window, and go to Fall Off. Select this preset here, and move these grey dots vertically to one another. Then go to the Advanced tab, and uncheck anti-aliasing. Now we're free to paint. It's pretty easy to forget about these last few steps, especially if you're a beginner or you haven't done it in a while. So I decided to create a short tutorial of the section we just covered, which I'll link in the card above. It's part of my How To In 2 Minutes playlist, where I create super short versions of my tutorials, along with some general hints and tips. Because nothing is worse than having to watch a 15 minute video in order to find what you were looking for. So my playlist How To In 2 Minutes is there to hopefully rectify that. I'll always be adding to this playlist, but due to their length and how often I plan on adding to it, I decided to disable any notifications for any video uploaded to that playlist, just so that it doesn't flood your YouTube feed. So if you're interested, you can save the playlist and come back to it every now and then if you need to. Anyways, back to the tutorial. We'll begin painting some of the larger features, and work our way down to the finer details. After that, I'll show you how to add your alpha channel. So let's get started. So I'm going to scroll into my texture, make my brush a lot smaller, and select a darker green tone to get started. I can do that by hitting the S key, when hovering over the top of my green base colour. Then I can go down here, and use the gradient to make it slightly darker. I'll also change my brush strength to 4. Now I'll begin to paint my texture. Things might get quiet now and then, as all I'm doing is painting. There aren't any new techniques that I haven't already gone over in my beginner series. But I will take some time to talk about the alpha when I come to it. Okay, so all I'm doing now is making a rough outline of the grass. This texture isn't an exact replica, but it's less about replicating the grass perfectly, and more about the techniques used.
adding some occluding shadows to give the grass some depth. Now I'm adding some highlights, just to help with the definition of the grass. Okay, so I'm happy enough with this, let's add our alpha. Go to the top of the screen, select where it says mix, and change it to erase alpha. Make sure your strength is at 1, and now erase everything other than our grass. Make sure you get everything, as sometimes you're left with floating pixels. So all I'm doing now is carefully going around the edges of my model, erasing what I don't need. Now we'll change to a slightly larger brush to remove what's left over. Now we're left with our grass. Move to the layout tab and rotate our model 90 degrees. And then switch to the render preview. Now go to the material properties Go to settings and find blend mode. Now change our blend mode from opaque to alpha clip. Okay, so we'll move on to the modeling part of the tutorial. I'm going to be showing you two ways to model our grass. The first method is quite simple and should only really be used if you plan on using the two-sided material. So just make a duplicate of our plane by selecting it and hitting shift D. Hit right click to confirm. Now switch to the rotation mode and rotate it 90 degrees on the Z axis. Now select both planes and hit Ctrl J to join them. Okay, so that's the first method done, but I'll show you quickly what happens if you use this method without a two-sided material. If we go to this little arrow here and enable back face culling, we can see that our material is actually transparent on its back face. If you want to know more about what's going on here, I have a video all about back face culling, which I'll put on screen now. But to sum it up quickly, this is how our model will look when rendered in a game engine if we don't use a two-sided material with this modeling technique. For the second method, we'll actually just duplicate our model with Shift D and switch to the geometry editing mode located over here. Hit A on our keyboard to select all and now go to Mesh, Normals, Flip. And as we can see, all of our surface normals are facing outwards. There are a few reasons why you'd want to use this method over a two-sided material, but the main reason is because two-sided materials are expensive, meaning they cost a lot more performance-wise to render. So let's finish this off by combining both of these models, so select both of them, and using Ctrl J to join them together. Now it's a game ready asset. So if you found this video helpful and want to see more, be sure to leave a like, consider subscribing, and hit that notification bell. That's all for me, I'll see you around.